Uh, hi guys, uh, thank you all for, for coming. I uh, feel good about uh, after lunch. Uh, uh, my name is Vladimir. I'm working for Elkomsoft, the company based in, in Moscow, Russia, with about 25 people uh, working in the, not exactly the computer security, but we are doing the computer forensics for, for over 20 years. Uh, uh, for the last five or six years, we are doing mostly uh, mobile forensics, and for the last two or three years, cloud forensics. Uh, here is just just one uh, some of our customers, but I won't make the presentation commercial. Don't worry. Uh, today we're going to to talk about the iCloud keychain. First, about the iCloud in general. Uh, in case if you if you don't know uh, what is that, uh, about the two two factor authentication a little bit, and then about the iCloud keychain, how it is implemented uh, internally and what are the risks of storing your information in the iCloud keychain. How many of you are using iCloud keychain? No one, really? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, how many of you use the iPhone? It's, it's probably less than, than Android ones. And, and, and nobody is using iCloud keychain, really. It's extremely convenient feature, but I will tell a little bit about it later. Uh, let's start with the uh, with the smartphone contents um, uh, first. Uh, I'm actually using the smartphone much more than the computer nowadays, on uh, even at home. Even though yeah, I, I have a notebook, I have a desktop computer, but I, but I do maybe two thirds of, of my work from the, uh, from the smartphone. Everything is in there. Uh, my corporate mail, my personal mail all my passwords, uh, accounts to social networks, uh, pictures, picture and videos, and, and so on. I also use the iPad. Uh, they're, of course, connected to the same Apple iCloud account. Everything is synced between them. If needed, I can log on from, from the iPad to my office computer, which is running Windows, uh, that I don't like at home. I, I use only Mac. And, and, and so, that the smartphone is actually an essential storage of, of all personal, private, and corporate information. There's quite a lot of data is there, including, for example, the geolocation history. Uh, uh, even if you uh, disable uh, almost al almost everything, on, on Apple it's a little bit more safe than on Android. Uh, on Android, if you disable the uh, uh, location tracking, still still some data will be there. On Apple it is better, but uh, not, not much of the people disable that because you want, for example, geolocation tag on, on, on your pictures uh, just, just to save the history. Uh, so, uh, what are the, uh, speaking of forensics and, and how to get access of the data stored on the smartphone, there's quite a lot of methods exist. That's uh, not only about Apple. They work for for other platforms as well as well for Android phones. Uh, the most comprehensive method is uh, JTAG or chip off. Uh, anybody of you is aware of what is that? That's actually uh, reading the uh, memory chip from the smartphone. That's a destructive method. Uh, ch ch chip off when you remove the chip from the smartphone, put it into the uh, cheap reader and, and extract uh, all the data from that. Of course, the data might be encrypted. Uh, JTAG is a bit more safe. That's connecting to the special port on the, on the phone. Not all the phones have, have that port. It's actually used for debugging mostly. But that way you can also get all the data from there. There is also a physical acquisition, uh, which is hard and which is not available for latest um, iPhones, for example. There is a logical acquisition method, which, which is much, much uh, more simple. Uh, basically, it's just creating a backup of the iPhone. And now, uh, that is a cloud acquisition method, and it, it becomes more and more popular just because the physical acquisition doesn't work and logical acquisition doesn't provide uh, all, uh, all the information. The problems of cloud acquisition is that there are uh, quite a lot of different platforms. The most popular are, are from Apple, uh, Google, and Microsoft. Microsoft, that, that's not only about the Microsoft phones uh, running on um, 
uh, Windows 10 Mobile, but also about the Windows desktop systems. They're also uh, syncing quite a lot of data between your computer and Microsoft Cloud. Uh, to, to get data from there, the, the, the major problem is that you have to, you have, to have the credentials, the login and password, and, and if the account is protected with, this, um, with two-factor authentication, you have to, uh, to have the second factor as well, which can be a, uh, a smartphone, the token, or uh, SMS, or some, something else. Uh, speaking of cloud, there are several acquisition um, uh, methods uh, available as well. The cloud may be just a storage, like a Dropbox or Google Drive. Uh, there are also backups in the cloud, uh, especially for the, uh, for the iPhones, uh, for Android, that backups are not so comprehensive and don't contain all the data from the phone. And there is also a syncing method when the data is, is being synced across the cloud and all the devices connected to that cloud. And the data uh, available from all those methods in, is actually different, the set of data, I mean. Uh, uh, the full device uh, backups, as I said, are available only, only for Apple and uh, only if you uh, enable the, the cloud cloud backup, uh, which some of the people don't do, especially the <laughs> paranoid ones. Uh, most of the data is there, but many of the applications um, opt out backing up their data into the, the cloud. And um, uh, uh, cloud backups of the iPhone, they also contain the, uh, the keychain. The keychain is the most secure storage in the uh, iOS operating systems uh, because it contains the most critical data, such as tokens, encryption keys, passwords, and so on, even the credit cards. And in cloud backups, this data is encrypted using the uh, hardware-specific key. So if you restore from the cloud backup of Apple iPhone to the other device, all those data stored in the keychain will not be restored. On, on, only part of it, actually, maybe the names of the records and so on, but you will not get your passwords back. Uh, there is uh, no standard way to get the backup out from the cloud. Apple simply doesn't offer such option, so we have to use the third-party software to download backups. We have introduced such software, I think, three or four years ago. And do you remember the... Uh, Celebgate, the leak of celebrity photos about th three years ago. You know? uh, that, um, at, at that time, about 100 of iCloud accounts of celebrities has been hacked through the iCloud backups, and the photos stored there has been published then on some forums and, and, and so on. Only after that, uh, Apple enabled the two-factor authentication protection to iCloud backups. Before that, uh, iCloud backups were accessible uh, using just iCloud, well, Apple ID and password. Speaking of uh, synced data on Apple, um, there is a bit less information than for, for Google Android devices. Uh, Google Android basically sync almost everything. There is, there is also a backup, but once you restore the Android device, um, and uh, connected to the same Google account, information is like synced back. Uh, speaking of Apple, uh, there is much less, but still there is quite a lot of interesting information, especially for forensics when investigating the crime or whatever. Uh, there is a call log, for example. Apple actually uh, never published that information and never tell, uh, told us that uh, uh, call logs are being synced. Uh, we have found that when, when exploring the data stored in the iCloud. And there is no option on, a, on your phone to disable syncing of uh, call logs. Uh, there are also media files. If you enable the iCloud photo library, there is a health data, surprisingly, uh, which I think shouldn't be stored in the cloud because it's uh, critical. There is also mail, but one which is cloud-based. Uh, there are also all your internet activities. They're also synced. Uh, uh, apart from, I think only the search history from Safari is not being synced, uh, but the history itself is. 
Uh, there is also some, some other date like uh, Apple Pay. Don't worry, your credit card date is not stored. Uh, if you use Apple Pay, only last four digits, and that's it. Uh, home, home devices uh, that uh, use the, uh, the home kit. Uh, the wallet data, wallet is a storage for you know, boarding passes, tickets, uh, hotel reservations, and, and, and so on. So there is quite a lot. Uh, there is also information that it's not so easily accessible. Uh, if you go to Apple website and, and check the document about the uh, law enforcement, what information Apple can provide by legal requests, uh, you'll find a full list what do they provide. And that includes, uh, for example, all the history of your purchases, uh, of music, applications, and so on. There are also mail logs and uh, logs of um, uh, iMessage and uh, FaceTime. Uh, there are no communications themselves, um, no chats, but there are still some logs, for example, when you uh, connected and sent something. And there is some of deleted data. Uh, about a half year ago, we have discovered that the files in iCloud photo library are not being deleted even uh, after 30 days and stored actually forever. Uh, uh, Apple didn't officially respond it, but in just a few days after we have discovered that and released the software to download deleted files, they closed the hole and, and now media files are stored only about two weeks. There is also available the list of all your devices connected to the account. You can, you can do that right from your smartphone or your iPad, and the details about every device, including the serial number and so on. Now let's, let, let's talk about the keychain. Uh, the keychain is, is something unique. There, there is no such thing in, in Windows operating system. Uh, maybe the, the closest Analogy is uh, Windows registry, but the keychain is, is more interesting. It contains, yes, the most critical information, uh, the, the passwords, uh, encryption keys, and, and so on. There are uh, three types of the keychain, which are very close by the structure and by encryption. The one is on the iOS device. Uh, the second is in the, in the Mac, um, Mac OS operating system and also the iCloud keychain. And uh, all those three are connected and might, might be th uh, synced across their uh, devices. Uh, on the iOS device, there is no way to, to look at what is the, inside the keychain. Uh, what the, the only thing you can do, you can create the local uh, backups, uh, backup in iTunes. Uh, that backup should be created with a password. Otherwise, the data in the keychain is encrypted using the hardware key. But if it is encrypted with a user-supplied password, you can decrypt the keychain and decrypt actually some of the records from the keychain, not all of them. Uh, many applications uh, use uh, the other security class uh, that doesn't allow uh, the, the items from the keychains, uh, the keychain to be decrypted. Uh, speaking of macOS, it is simpler to browse. You can uh, you can click on any item in the keychain and check the box to to to, to view, supply the uh, logon password, and see the contents of that keychain item. Uh, for iCloud keychain, there is absolutely no way to view it until you mm, sync the uh, your macOS computer with a keychain, and uh, that, that way you can browse the key, iCloud keychain items that, that are being synced and downloaded to, to Mac computer, but uh, exactly the same way, uh, one by one records. Uh, if we compare the contents of the uh, keychain stored in, in local backup in, in iCloud, you'll find that uh, they're actually very close. Uh, in the documentation on the iCloud keychain on Apple website, it, it says that only um, some of the passwords are being stored there, like 
Wi-Fi passwords, passwords to mail accounts, passwords to websites, and something else. But it doesn't say anything about the encryption keys, about tokens, and, and so on. Uh, and the other thing that is not saved in the iCloud keychain is the after uh, complete text. <clears throat> uh, here is how the keychain looks like if you uh, export it into the XML file. The first example is for the, the password to the Wi-Fi access point. Here is the, the password to uh, IMAP uh, mail account. And, and here is the, the password to, to Gmail account. And uh, there is not only the uh, uh, record name, the, uh, the account name, and the password, but also the date and time when this record has been created and when it has been updated. This is also critical for, for forensics, actually. There is also credit card data stored in the keychain, also about the same way. There is card, card holder name, the, the card number, the expiration date, and just not the CVV code, sorry. Uh, there are different protection classes of the keychain, and uh, they just define basically how secure that record is. Um, some of the keychain items are available, for example, after the, uh, not, not just right after the device is booted and turned on, but after it is unlocked with the passcode. And also there is a flag in the uh, keychain property that indicates how it should be encrypted with a hardware key or with a password, and should it be synced to the iCloud or not. Uh, to break into records in the local keychain, you have to break the password itself on, on, on the backup itself. It was easy, in, relatively easy in older versions of uh, iOS, up to iOS 10. In iOS 10, 10.0.1, .1, exactly, it was actually an epic fail from, from Apple. They, uh, that was the, the same hash uh, stored in the iCloud backup, which is relatively secure with um, uh, 10,000 uh, iterations of uh, SHA-1. But they also stored the, the, the other hash uh, that was just single SHA-256, and it was extremely extremely fast to break, millions of uh, passwords per second, even on the CPU, not speaking of the GPU. Uh, they learned the lesson from our report and from the release of our software. In the next version, in, in 10.1, they removed that, that weak hash, and in version 10.2 of uh, iOS, they extremely uh, hardened the, the hashing, and now the speed of password cracking on the CPU is only about five or six passwords per minute, not per second. And on the GPU, on the fastest one available, we can only get about 100 passwords per second, which is also not much. That means that the passwords to iTunes backups are extremely hard to break. I would say not possible to break at all. Even if you have a supercomputer, you can break only about maybe four or five characters until, for, um, of course, you, you use a very simple password. Uh, here is the MacOS keychain I, I told you about. You can see that there are all the, pass all the passwords, all the items together, um, together under the login, and just a little bit lower, there is an iCloud. Actually, the, uh, the, they can be viewed all together, or you can view only the uh, cloud keychain uh, items, of course, after they uh, have been synced with the local computer. Uh, speaking of uh, iCloud protection in general, it is pretty good. There is a document on the Apple website describing what algorithms are being used, and the algorithms are strong, the, the key length is uh, 128 or, or 256, um, also, once someone access your iCloud account, you receive the notification uh, on your mail. And uh, 
after a few unsuccessful attempts, uh, trying, for example, to break the password to your iCloud account, then the account will be locked. By the way, that, that's probably not a very good idea, because if you know someone else uh, Apple ID, you can just try to log on to that Apple ID with a, a few incorrect passwords, and, and his account will be locked. And he'll, he'll be out of syncing. Uh, after Celebgate, three years ago, Apple also protected the iCloud because with uh, two-factor authentication. Uh, actually, at that time, it was two-step two verification, which is older and which is not so secure because it mostly uses SMS, and SMS can be intercepted or, no, or hacked. Or there are all, so, some ways to break into them. Uh, with a two for newer two-factor uh, authentication, it, it's now much stronger. The only way to break into account with two-factor authentication enable, of course, uh, if you don't have the second factor, such as device or SMS code, is to steal the authentication token from the computer, Mac or Windows, uh, that is locked on into the same iCloud account. And using that token, you can access all the data in the iCloud, well, except the iCloud keychain. And there will be no notification and no need for second factor. Uh, now, when you log on to the account protected with uh, 2FA, you'll get immediately the notification on, uh, on all of your uh, connected devices, and you'll even get the map with a point from, from where the account is, is um, uh, trying to be, to be accessed. Speaking of the iCloud keychain, again, it syncs, it keeps and syncs quite a lot of passwords to, to websites, to mail accounts, to Wi-Fi. Uh, it also stores the credit cards. And uh, the technical implementation of that it will actually blow your mind. It, it's really hard and uh, multi-layer. But basically how it works, there is a special storage in the iCloud that keeps all that iCloud uh, passwords. They're, of course, encrypted. And they're being exchanged across the devices. One uh, device is locked into I iCloud. It, it sends a notification message to the, uh, to the cloud asking to provide with the new items. Or if you add a new item uh, to the local keychain, for example, accessing the password-protected website, uh, that item in, in just five to 10 minutes is being uploaded to the cloud keychain as well. And all other uh, devices connected to the, to the account will, will get that password as well. Um, to set up iCloud keychain without, on the account without two-factor authentication, uh, there will be an option shown, speaking the approve with security code. It, it, it's not from the, from, from the first look, it, it's not really obvious what is that and how it actually protects its account. By default, Apple offers to set the uh, security code the same as the passcode on the device itself. But there are also options available. You can use the random security code uh, generated by Apple. You can uh, create a uh, strong security code, or you, you can not create the security code at all. Uh, at all. And there is an important thing about the creating the security code. I will show you why. With two-factor authentication, it is much more simple. Once the two-factor authentication is enabled, uh, there is basically almost nothing else to do. There is no security code. You will just get the device approved with the SMS sent to the trusted phone number, and that's it. But there is one more thing. Once the new device is enrolled into the iCloud keychain, uh, you will be asked for the passcode of one of other devices that are already connected to the same iCloud account and the iCloud keychain. That, that looks weird. For example, I have the iPhone. I made a setup for the iCloud keychain there, and then I Trying to do the same on the on the MacBook, for example, and MacBook asks for the passcode of my iPhone. 
That looks strange, but I will show what, what it is for. Uh, now, I think starting from iOS 11, because I, I, I never seen that in iOS 10, once you uh, connect the device to the account without two-factor authentication, you will, you will always get the red mark there. Uh, it looks like it almost exactly as the, uh, like when update of the iOS system is available and it is reminding you to set up the uh, two-factor authentication. That's actually a good idea. Uh, for the iCloud keychain, there are two modes to, to, to work with. There is a sync mode and there is a recovery mode. Uh, sync mode, I already told a little bit about it. Uh, it is about the exchanging the passwords and credit card numbers and everything else across the devices and uh, between the devices and the cloud. And there is also the recovery mode. What it is for? It is for in case if you have, you have lost, for example, access to all your trusted devices. But still, you want to get your passwords back. Uh, this method uh, works uh, seriously differently. Um, deep inside, there are different protocols, uh, different encryption, different keys, and, and everything else. Uh, you can get basic information on how it works from the uh, security guide, which is, for, for some reason is updated not immediately but, uh, after the iOS uh, release, but about a half a year later. And, uh, but it still describes that the, the basics uh, of that about the keychain syncing. It describes that such thing like a circle of trust. You probably remember that the, the term from the, from the well-known movie. Um, uh, there is a public key for the uh, syncing uh, identity. And there is a private key, which is impossible to break. It uses elliptical uh, cryptography. And uh, all synced items are encrypted specifically for the device. So, uh, so the other device cannot get direct access to, to the item uh, synced from the, from the other device. For, for the keychain recovery, uh, there is a special Established escrow service in the iCloud. It is really, really secure, but it works slightly differently if you uh, have the two factor authentication enabled and if you don't have the two factor authentication. Uh, without uh, two factor authentication, you, you probably remember I told you about the iCloud security code. It is really, really important. Uh, if you do set iCloud security code, anyone, then um, uh, your uh, iCloud keychain items will be stored uh, and accessible by the escrow service. If you don't set the iCloud security code at all, um, then your keychain will not be saved in the iCloud. It will be synced directly across devices. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure how it is implemented exactly technically because it, that, that is out of our reach. We cannot go so deep inside into the Apple services. Uh, but still, there is no way to, to pull the items uh, out of the iCloud if you don't have the iCloud security code set. So if, you, if you're paranoid and thinking about accessing your uh, cloud keychain items by the three-letter agencies, the most safe uh, configuration seems to be without two-factor authentication, surprisingly, and without the cloud security code. The bad side of that is if you lose access to your trusted device, for example, just, just uh, broken your phone or, forgot, or uh, got it stolen, uh, you won't be able to, to get your iCloud keychain items back. Never. In the recovery mode, that's a basic diagram how it works. Uh, I'll explain it a little bit later. There is an escrow service. Uh, there are no, no much details on, on, on that. Oh, by the way, uh, Apple also mentions that there is a special hardware security model, um, model um, somewhere uh, in the iCloud. There is absolutely no explanation what is that. 
And it says that after 10 un unsuccessful attempts of breaking into it, the, all the data is being securely wiped. Believe it or not, I don't know. Here is how, how it works. Um, are you aware of, of k back term? I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's widely used by, um, by different, um, um, speaking of the uh, keychain in general, not only the iCloud keychain, and it is also available in the local iTunes backups. The k bag is actually the storage where di different encryption keys of any, any kind is, is stored. There is a KBAG password which protects the access to the KBAG itself and the KBAG itself uh, contains the keys uh, used to, to encrypt the items uh, in the uh, iCloud keychain. Um, uh, here is the, the, the record of the iCloud keychain items. Uh, the, the, the first four bytes is the key version indicating the algorithm. The next four bytes is the uh, protection class. I'll also tell about that. Uh, then the, the, the size of the wrapped key and then the data itself encrypted. Uh, so again about the iCloud security code. I, sa I said that it is probably the most uh, safe method to, to protect your keychain from anyone else. Don't set the security code. Uh, and there are three options available. You can set the simple code with just four or six digits. There can be complex security code that can contain any characters. And there is a next item is device generated or random security code. You will have to remember it. And it is virtually not possible to remember 24 uh, random characters. You'll have to write it down. And another funny thing is that if you use the simple or complex security code, then uh, in the iCloud, it, the hash of that security code is, is, is saved and being used. And if you use the device generated security code, then that code itself is saved there. So Apple is probably thinking that it, it's secure enough. Um, for every device that is enrolled into the iCloud keychain, the escrow proxy has the, the record that looks like com.apple.icdp com and dot the, the, the device hash, that, that's a hash of the uh, unique device ID. And the contents of, of that record is uh, uh, randomly generated a backup uh, back password. And it, 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 it's used with the RFC algorithms to, to encrypt the keys from the, from the KBAC. Uh, the escrow proxy, as I said, that it, it's not documented how it works, but what we have discovered that it uses the uh, secure remote password SRP uh, protocol, which is much safer than, than general protocols used uh, even for SSL connections. It is uh, absolutely safe from man the middle attacks, in contrary with uh, HTTPS. Uh, and they, it doesn't need the passwords to be um, transferred across the network, even the, even the hash of the passwords. And it doesn't uh, keep any critical information such as password itself on, on, on the service. So it, it is based on the access by, by tokens. Uh, the, uh, the, the most interesting key, key chain, uh, cloud keychain records stored in the escrow service are, that's a com apple secure backup. Uh, it contains the backup back password and it is being used for the full restore of the, of the, of the whole iCloud keychain. And there is also uh, in other types of records, uh, Com Apple uh, ICDP with a device hash, I, I told you about that. Uh, it contains also the backup um, back password, but, but for individual records for given devices. And, and so that way uh, we can recover not the complete iCloud keychain, but the individual records of it. Uh, if, if you don't set the two-factor uh, authentic, authentication, um, uh, then the algorithm uh, works basically as the, the uh, client, I mean the device, generates the uh, random 
25 uh, characters uh, key, big key. Uh, then it is the hash is uh, generated with the 10,000 of uh, SHA 256 uh, from the either iCloud security code or the PES code of the device. There is no difference uh, between them and uh, from that point of view. Then it is encrypted with uh, this, um, uh, using the hash as the key, and that in encrypted uh, KBEC key is stored in the escrow proxy. Uh, there is a kind of uh, API to work with the uh, escrow proxy. Uh, it is used, of course, only internally by uh, Apple itself to acquire the certificates, to, uh, to add uh, new secure records, to get the list of available records there, to get the phone number associated with the account, to, to send a verification code there, and some other things. To initialize, uh, to recover, to get the data back, to update records when the password has been changed to some resource and so on. Uh, there are also some public records which are uh, more easily accessible without all that all that stuff with the, with the encryption keys. Some some device uh, device data, uh, the number of, of failed attempts actually, so we can get that one, once we uh, log on and try to to add the device to the iCloud uh, circle of trusted devices, and and some other data. Uh, another thing uh, the iCloud keychain is based on is the uh, uh, SRP uh, protocol version 6. <laughs> to be honest, I, I don't have, uh, have an idea what, how it is different from the previous version. That, that report is actually a uh, result of the work of a large team of, of, of our researchers. And, and so even me, after reading that, don't understand all the technical uh, details the, uh, deep inside. Uh, but, uh, uh, as I said, by analyzing the so-called public records in the iCloud keychain, uh, we can understand, for example, whether the iCloud security code is set or not. And if not, we are out of luck and we cannot get an anything from the iCloud. And if that code is set, we can, we can log on. Uh, access to escrow proxy, which is used to, for, for syncing and for recovery, is based not on the password but on uh, access token. And the token is actually different from one we widely use to access the iCloud backups. For example, when you go on to, to the iCloud from the Mac or Windows computer to, to get some of your data uh, synced between the computer and the iCloud, the token is generated and saved locally and we can extract it, decrypt, and use to access the iCloud backups or iCloud synced information. But that is not the token to access the iCloud backup. Uh, the token for, for, uh, for uh, iCloud, uh, iCloud keychain is, is called uh, password uh, equivalent token, and it has a uh, very short time to leave for security reasons, only five minutes. And to get that token, uh, we haven't reversed that algorithms from, um, till, till the end. The new type of uh, authentication is being used, called GSA. In synced mode, everything uh, looks a little bit simpler, but to, to work completely with sync mode, you have to add the trusted device uh, uh, to that circle. That's not so easy as a, using the private API. Uh, but that will be immediately recognized by all other devices. You'll get the notification that some device is being added to the trusted circle, so it leaves the traces. But, but still, if, you, if you're able to do that, you'll get full access to the uh, key value storage and all the items on the, in the keychain. There are also such things as uh, called TOMPs uh, that are actually uh, encrypted records of individual items uh, that, that allow us to, uh, to work in a, say, mixed mode between, between sync uh, and, and restore. The algorithm of, of encrypting the tombs is, is, is really also hard and, and multi-layer. You, you first get the list of, of the tombs available from the Apple servers. 
you find the record IDs, you, you get the backup password for every record ID, you have to unwrap the keyback key, uh, decrypt the keys from the keyback, and, and only using that key get, a, get access to the encrypted keychain items. Uh, what are other important parts of the iCloud keychain? First, the GSA, as I said, uh, uh, the new authentication that it was started to in macOS version 10.10, .10, but only the, its basic implementation in the uh, macOS 10.11 uh, is seriously improved. Uh, there is also the, the thing called NEC data stored on the computer once you add the computer to the trust, uh, trusted circle so it can access the iCloud can chain. And there is a continuation token. That is the most, most important key to all the data. And with that continuation token, which is actually hard to, to, uh, to access and to decrypt, but it is theoretically possible from the computer, you'll be able to access the iCloud keychain and get all the items uh, from it without any notifications, without need to know the Apple ID and password, and without the second factor. Uh, I think I have a little bit time. I will show a very quick demo how the iCloud keychain is accessed. I have to supply the Apple ID and, and password. I will, uh, I will use mine, our main account. It is protected with two-factor authentication, but I already accessed that account from that computer, so I won't have to pass it again. But, let me see where the internet connection works. Yeah, it is. It will take just a few seconds to access. Internet connection seems to be slow. Okay, so here I can select the list of, of all trusted devices. Uh, that's all the devices connected to the same iCloud account that have or had the um, um, iCloud keychain enabled there. But even after removal of that device from the trusted circle, I still can use its uh, passcode to access the iCloud keychain. So I'll select the say, my iPad. Enter its passcode. I select where to download, and it will also take just a, just a few seconds. Oh, incorrect passcode, sorry. Let's try again. There's another interesting thing about the incorrect attempts. After five incorrect attempts, your iCloud key Oh no, what the? It couldn't get wrong. I think it's actually a problem of the internet connection, but not the, in okay. Let's try with the, with the other account, which doesn't have the two-factor authentication enabled, but have the iCloud security code set. Or maybe someone accessed my cloud keychain already and changed the passcode. Oh no! Okay, uh, when accessing the uh, iCloud keychain for the account that doesn't has have the uh, factor authentication set, I will have to to enter the iCloud security code first. Okay, then the second step is after I entered the security code. I should receive an, 
SMS from Apple with the SMS code. Yeah, I got it. Download. Let's see. Okay, now it works. We go to Explore Backup, and we have a different categories of data extracted from the iCloud keychain. First is the Apple IDs and passwords. I actually accessed quite a lot of different Apple ID accounts uh, from, from, from my devices from different purposes. For example, our corporate uh, developers account on Apple and, and, and so on. And the passwords to them are stored there. I have over 40 uh, Wi-Fi network passwords. I have several mail accounts that include the our corporate exchange account and my personal mail. Uh, there are passwords for websites, almost 400. There are nine credit cards, some of them are expired. And probably the most interesting part is the, the tokens. You can see, you can recognize the tokens to social network accounts for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Adobe, and, and, and some other things. Uh, in the Apple Keychain documentation, there is nothing about that, actually. It only tells about the passwords, but not about, not about the tokens. Uh, I'm, I'm really close to the end. Some, some, some conclusions and, and some risks. Uh, to access the iCloud Keychain, you cannot use just the a sync or recovery mode that uh, both also will, will, will not work well for, for accessing the data. So what we have used is a kind of mix of the sync and recovery modes. So that's like a recovery, but not for the whole keychain, but for individual records. Uh, you, you can, of course, uh, use a pure sync, uh, and there is also no API, but at least you, you, you basically know how to do that and how to add a new device and get the password sync there. But uh, that leaves quite a lot of traces and notifications on the all, all connected accounts. Uh, to, to access the keychain, you need to have credentials, Apple ID and password. You need to have access to the trusted device uh, or to, to receive the SMS code. If the account is, has no two-factor uh, cloud security code set, you cannot access it. If it does have the, the security code set, you, you, you have to know it. And also, after that, you will also have to receive the, uh, the code sent, sent by SMS. Uh, if you still have the old account with the legacy uh, two-step verification on the account. It's not recommended to use it at all. It's not convenient, not safe, and probably not secure. It's now almost no, no, not supported by Apple, so I would recommend to, to change it to two-factor to, to authentication. Uh, and if you are really paranoid and don't want your data to be even theoretically accessed by, by someone else, uh, it's uh, the, mo the most secure way is to, to have the account without two-factor authentication but, and without the cloud security code set. But that way, if, if your password will be leaked, someone will be able to, to access, for example, your cloud backup. Um, uh, the only risk, and w w which, which is not explored uh, yet, if, if uh, someone gets physical access to the Mac computer, that is connected to the same iCloud account and has the iCloud keychain option turned on and steal the continuation token from it. But that's extremely hard to get. To get. We're working on that for several months and we, we weren't able to, to do that yet. I'm, I'm sure we will, but we need some more time. And, 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 and finally, uh, the, the other conclusions. Uh, the cloud keychain, remember that it contains not only the passwords, but also the authentication tokens. And if, for example, your, your other accounts for secure messengers, for social networks, and so on, are protected with two-factor authentication, and you think you're safe, but if you, get, you, you, you will get your device stolen or, or lost, 
and someone will be able to break into your iCloud keychain. He'll be able to access all of your accounts. You'll have to change all the passwords and, and enable to factor authentication again. Uh, the other interesting thing is that the iCloud keychain, as we have found recently and just about a week ago, seem to be created in the cloud right when you enable to factor authentication. Uh, even if you have, you, you have no single device uh, with the iCloud keychain enabled, still the iCloud keychain is there, but it contains only the special uh, system case, but no user passwords. And it also contains some, some new special case um, that are used in uh, iOS 11. I cannot disclose th that information yet, and we're still exploring, uh, exploring that. And uh, probably the, the, the best way and the best advantage of that approach, accessing the iCloud keychain, is for the case when you cannot, for any reasons, uh, get access to the local keychain. Uh, for example, when the device is, uh, uh, has the strong uh, iTunes backup set, and you cannot perform the physical acquisition, and even if you manage to break the uh, iTunes password, uh, you, you will not get all the records from there. Uh, some, for example, some of secure messengers like Telegram, they do store the access tokens in the, in the local keychain, but you will not be able to, to decrypt them from there. Only from the uh, iCloud keychain you can. So, that's it. Thank you. Uh, that, uh 再一次谢谢他为我们精彩的演讲一下有关那个 好，那没问题的话，那大家再呃掌声感谢一次。